Hey, I'm Pep, and in this video we're going to look at the Deck of Many Worlds. Now I already looked at it in a previous video and talked about it, but what we're going to do today specifically is show you how building the worlds basically works, as well as a couple other things. Now, so it's just one large deck of cards, ooh, oh, 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 oh. and you're going to want to shuffle that if I can ever get it into a single pile. <laughs> On top of this deck though, there are also oop, helper cards that not only completely teach you how to use the deck, but give you little helpful bits whenever you kind of forget, oh, how exactly did that one thing work? Oh, alignment? There it is. Anyway, so what we'll do is we draw a card. So at this point, we're looking at a gas giant. So it has standard gravity, normal atmosphere, those are the biomes. It doesn't have a lot of biomes compared to some of the other ones. Now, they also have a little extra blurb. So, the gases of this world are markedly stratified, forming distinct layers of varying composition and density. So, that's interesting. Now, what you want to do in order to continue building the world is you take another card and you flip it over and you simply stick it under like that. And now you see... All these different things have different like, ups or downs. So Accord, which is basically how people feel about the planet, is about neutral. It has a high technology level, a low magic level. It has not a lot of religion. Um, it is lawful, and then that second one means neutral. So in general, the people on the planet are lawful neutral. Now what you also do is take another one and slide it under here. And you cover up the arrows like that. And so now we have some little uh, key informations about the planet. Some, some hooks, some secrets that you might have, or maybe some things the players can find out if they do some research on the planet. So it's home to miniature or gigantic versions of its sapience. So that's interesting. There's also distinct layers. So maybe the people who live there are gas people or something like that, and there's giant versions of them in some layers, very small versions of them in other layers. That could be interesting. And then, you see down here, it's also characterized by a phenomenon that manifests creatures' emotions visibly, such as through distinct glowing auras. So again, because it's in this interesting gas giant, maybe each layer shows particular emotions. And as you're wandering through them, your emotions, as it says, manifests in, in very distinct ways. So that's really interesting. Now, on the sides here, you have uh, numbers, essentially. So this is 1 and 4 is 5, and then 3 and 3 is 6. So what it's asking you to do is essentially to take more of these cards, flip them over, and put them underneath like this. So 1... Two, three, four, five. Oh, lost one. Get back out here. Six. And these are essentially the sentient races, the uh, main races that you'll find on this planet. Oh, I put too many. There's only supposed to actually be five on that side. So... Yeah, those are the quote-unquote good races. And then on the other side, the six that we marked are the hostile races. Basically the kind of enemies you'll find there. Now, just like with anything, you are the creator of this world, of this universe, so don't feel like you have to use everything that comes out here. There could be an extra enemy. If there is an extra enemy, though, there might be some sort of reason. Oh, look at this one. That actually looks like it's very at home on a gas world. Ah, so does the living apocalypse. Oh my gosh, living apocalypse sounds, sounds interesting. And ferrofluid ooze that, ooze, that sounds interesting too. So yeah, that's basically what you do. And da-da, you have a world. You have the description of the world if people are interested. You have some plot hooks. You have... Uh, some extra world building details, and then you have the kind of, of creatures and races that people will see on that world. So that's essentially what you do. Now on top of that, 
you can use this in different ways. And so if you look at this, like I said, these are explaining all the different things about it. There's even an example of a sample world, which is nice. It doesn't put as many creatures in there as there normally are. But it also has ways to create a non-player character. So you can use the Accord to see how people uh, um, actually react to that person. You can have their alignment. You can have uh, what kind of connection or proficiency with they have to magic, religion, technology, etc. Yeah, and you can use it to create a player character in the same way, kind of in a random way. And on top of that, they actually have... Um, I believe, a way to use it to make small cities. Oh yeah, that's just in the, the regular building part. So essentially what you could do after you've finished creating the planet like this, you can kind of do the exact same thing, uh, maybe even just ignoring the planet part, to create an individual city. Maybe there's a city on the planet that has a, a different balance between things, which is interesting. Let's just quickly make another world as an example. So... Oh, here's an interesting one. So, again, standard gravity, normal atmosphere. It has a lot more biomes than the other one, but you'll notice a lot of the planet is covered in ice. Um, ice sheets engulf all but a small portion of this Earth-like world. That's really interesting. And then, as before, we flip this over, put it underneath, and just ahead of time, I will slide this one underneath. Ooh, there's not a lot of good races here, but there's a lot of different monsters you can find. So, rich in natural resources or rare star metal. So that's interesting. Maybe the main reason that people even explore the outer areas is that there's a resource that is very difficult to find in other places. And then, populated by lifelike constructs, scripted to interact with visitors and repeat the same day over and over. That's also really interesting. So now, we would create the good races, so it looks like this one is mostly populated by elves and urogs. And it also shows you what particular book those things came from. So now we'll go and I'm not going to put all the, uh, you know what, sure, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten. Let's look at the extreme amount of enemies that are here. So we've got Crest Eaters, Aeon Guards, those could actually be the uh, sentient robots. Assembly Ooze, also an option for being technically. Uh, Moonflower, Dust Mantas, Ghouls, Blood Brothers, Anasite, Zamalia, and Cernok. Uh, I'm not going to lay them all out because we already looked at them all. But yeah, so there's another example of creating a world. So, of course, if you're someone who is running a Starfinder game, you're going to probably use more than one world. Maybe you want to create your own world. But these are really easy ways to create planets very fast on the fly. Your players decide to say, oh, I really want to go, you know, look at another planet. You know, we want to go explore. Well, instead of having to make something up really fast on the fly, you can just use this. And as I mentioned, not only can you use it to also create settlements, you can just create entire systems. Again, you can use a lot of the, the same things to create the systems. Oh, this uh, overlapped. But, um, yeah, or you can create multiple planets in the same system. And we didn't really look at this, but this one has high magic, average technology, low religion, uh, they are chaotic good. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's essentially how you create a world using this. And it, hopefully that gives you a, a better of idea of exactly what you're looking at when you go to use this supplement. Anyway, that's uh, all I got to say. I highly suggest this if you're playing Starfinder. Um, players often want to go find new worlds and... Uh, you can say you have as much imagination, but, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of interesting worlds that can come out of here. There's a water world. That's kind of neat. Uh, oh my gosh. That world is intense. Oh, because it's a mega structure built around a star. Interesting. 
interesting. Now, I don't want to ruin all this for you, but see, there's even a colony ship. Oh, that's a neat space station. Anyway, Deck of Many Worlds, check it out. It's by Paizo Publishing, of course, who makes Starfinder. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.